dear students today we are going to learn a lesson the call of the soil written by venkateshwaran iyer the writer is a science graduate he worked with ibm in mumbai as a project manager for software implementation he said goodbye to the it sector and quit his job in 2004 to do organic farming in pet village in danu taluka palghar district maharashtra the writer's journey is from a techie to a farmer on this theme he wrote a book moog over microchips it was not a career change but a lifestyle change he propagates organic farming to protect the fertile land to protect the mother earth the present lesson is about the writer's first crop of moog and his search for a desi variety of rice kaspai in this lecture you will learn new words from the lesson explanation of the entire lesson in english and summary of the lesson let's get started new words from the lesson write down these words in your notebook lush means dense gingerly means very carefully foliage means the leaves of plants fuzz means fine hair exhilarated means very happy broker means mediator between a buyer and seller adjacent means neighboring harakiri means a formal way of killing self by cutting one stomach with a sword here meaning to deceive oneself awful impressive aroma means fragrance enlightening means giving great knowledge and understanding rattled means talked rapidly and at length alluring means attracting insipid means tasteless insatiable means impossible to satisfy ruid means repented or regretted propagate means to spread reminiscing means remembering something in past hamlet means a group of houses dialect means local language scrambling means moving hurriedly ramshackle means in a state of severe disrepair elusive means difficult to find mutter means to utter the writer venkat ayer is a techy turn farmer he gave up the it industry and practiced organic farming he delivers lectures on organic farming he also works with organic farmers and ngos working in the organic field ngo means non government organizations in this lesson the writer narrates his experiences of organic farming let's begin the lesson open your textbook page number 26 the call of the soil a scent of rice the first crop it was april 2004 i stood in the middle of the lush green field of moog green gram and looked around me it was just before sunrise and the sky was turning a bright orange the ground was damp and the leaves were shining with dew my bare feet were muddy as i walked around gingerly inspecting the plants now at the beginning of the lesson the writer describes his experience of growing his first crop it was april 2004 the writer was inspecting the green field of moog that is green gram 
very early in the morning the ground was wet and muddy so he was walking carefully gingerly means very carefully around me were rows of chikku trees and below a dense foliage of moog at that point i could not have asked for anything more the moog plants not more than 2 feet tall had green pods hanging out the pods were not at ripe and there was a light fuzz growing on them there was still some time before the harvest i felt exhilarated look here foliage means the leaves of a plant there was rows of chikku trees and below a dense foliage of moog the plants were less than 2 feet the pods were not so ripe it was the time before the harvest the writer felt exhilarated by observing the scene exhilarated means very happy the writer felt very happy i stood watching the sunrise above the towering tree across the fence and slowly made my way back to the house a white structure in the middle of this greenery i could not believe that i was the owner of this land and that i was looking at my first crop as a farmer the writer watched the sunrise greenery in the field and his house in the middle of the greenery he felt as a proud owner of the land after i had paid the advance money for the land i thought i would have some time to get familiar with farming but moru dada the broker who got us the land had other ideas he was keen that we plant moog at once moru dada was the mediator between the writer and the land seller he suggested the writer to plant moog at once i was not prepared for this i was still reading books and trying to figure out what we could sow and how we should go about it moru dada was quite firm he said the season was right for sowing moog and the best seeds were available in surat in the adjacent state of gujarat the author was not prepared to plant moog he was collecting information about the crop moru dada was quite firm and he advised the writer that it was right season to sow this crop and suggested him to bring the seed from surat in gujarat i made a quick trip to surat and bought around 10 kg of moog moru dada rented his tractor to plow the land and quickly planted moog all over the place the writer brought 10 kg of moog and planted the seed all over the place a few days later we were overjoyed to see tiny green leaves i had never seen moog growing before and was thrilled at the sight it was the same thrill i had felt as a young boy when i saw the first of the hibiscus i had planted bloom at the railway quarters in ville parley in mumbai i was grateful to have taken moru's advice after sowing the seed moru dada and the writer were overjoyed to see small green leaves the author was thrilled and overjoyed he remembered the hibiscus he had planted at the railway quarters in ville parley in mumbai he was thankful to moru dada for giving such good advice the next thing moru dada wanted to do was spray some pesticide on the plants he claimed that it would give a higher yield this was something we did not want to do we were clear that we would not use any chemicals and try to explain it to him he reacted as if we had suggested 
harakiri moru dada wanted to spray some pesticide on the plants for better yield the writer denied the use of chemicals and tried to explain it to him he felt that it is harakiri harakiri means self destruction or deceiving to self it took a lot of convincing to ensure that moru dada and his friends did not use any chemicals on the farm they refused to understand how crops would grow without sprays it was very difficult for the writer to convince moru dada and his friends they refused to understand how crops would grow without sprays without sprays sprays here meaning pesticides contrary to what yorivan had told us nature did her job and she needed no bribes to get the work done soon it was harvest time and we managed a respectable 300 kilograms an awful lot of moog and with it a lot of confidence now i was certain the land was fertile and that it was possible to grow crops without chemicals it was a major moral booster the writer did not use any pesticide without any chemical nature did her job well he got 300 kilograms moog production now he had a lot of confidence for organic farming the writer's experience of the first crop was a major moral booster the scent of rice the first year i was late for the rice sowing season and had to resort to giving the gr4 variety that was short term and recommended by the agricultural officers at kosbad the next year we decided that we would start early and try to find some good traditional variety of rice to grow after describing the experience of his first crop the writer writes about his second experience about rice crop the writer was late for the rice sowing season in the first year so he planted gr4 hybrid variety of rice the variety was recommended by the agricultural officers at kosbad the next year they decided to grow some good traditional variety of rice we had read about traditional varieties of rice and knew that they did not require very high inputs of fertilizers these varieties were also quite strong and resisted pests we were sure that it was this type of rice that would grow well in our farm where we did not use any chemicals at all our previous years experience and low yield had taught us a lesson and we were sure we would not plant hybrids this year the traditional varieties of rice did not require high inputs of fertilizers they had decided not to use any chemicals at all they decided not to plant any hybrid variety that year in april 2005 we started to look for a good variety of traditional rice it was one of our neighbors in the village a businessman from mumbai who owned land who suggested that we plant a local scented variety of rice most of the farmers in and around the village of pet had switched over to hybrids the younger generation of farmers thought i was crazy to ask for the desi variety as they called it my regular visits to the village villages around searching for a good traditional variety also did not yield any results and we were almost giving up hope in april 2005 they started to look for a good variety of traditional rice traditional rice means desi rice 
the writer's one neighbor suggested him to plant a local scented variety of rice. Most of the farmers in that area were growing hybrid varieties. Other farmers thought that the writer was crazy, who was asking for desi varieties of rice. He could not get any good desi variety of rice. He was about to give up. I decided to give it one last try and spoke to Baban's father and some other elders. After many meaningful conversations, they mentioned the name of Kasbai. The writer spoke to Baban's father and some other elders about the traditional variety of rice. They suggested the name of Kasbai. Kasbai is a traditional long grain rice variety which has a distinct aroma though much milder than basmati. It's a long duration crop and most of the older people remembered growing it every years ago but they all shook their heads when I asked them about the seeds and told me that it had disappeared. Kasbai rice has a distinct aroma. Aroma means fragrance. It's a long duration crop. Older people remembered it, but they said the variety had disappeared. The variety was not available at present. The tales of Kasbai made us more determined to get it. We decided that if we did manage to get some seeds. This would be a great rice to grow. I thought the government may know something about it. A visit to the agricultural officer was enlightening. He had not even heard of this rice variety. He said the villagers were take, taking me for a ride and there was no rice by this name. The writer heard information about Kasbai and decided to get it. He visited an agricultural officer for more information, but he did not know the variety. He rattled off the names of a number of latest hybrids and even offered to give me some of them free of cost for a trial, cursing myself for wasting time with him. I moved on to the next destination. The agricultural officer spoke continuously about the latest hybrid varieties of rice. The author blamed himself and moved to the next destination. This time it was the Adivasi Mahamandala at Kosa, sorry, at Kasa, which buys rice from the Adivasi villagers on behalf of the government. Kasbai did not figure in their fields. A good indication why people did not grow it anymore. The market itself did not recognize the rice. So if you grew it, you would not be able to sell it. The writer visited the Adivasi Mahamandal at Kasa, which buys rice from the Adivasi villagers on behalf of the government. But the rice Kasbai was not available in the market too. However, the officer in charge here had more knowledge of rice and did remember Kasbai being sold to him a few years ago. The agricultural officer in charge told the writer that the rice was available in the market a few years ago. So the writer was encouraged to find it out. So, when I in Dhaniwari, Baban and I started looking for Dehu Handa and found a greying old man wearing a cap sitting outside his house on a charpai, an ex serpent of the village. He had acres of land, a huge house, and a large family. After exchanging the usual pleasantries 
we came to the topic of kasbai the mere mention of kasbai and dehu handa drifted into the past the writer visited dhaniwari it is a village with his friend baban to talk to dehu handa an ex sarpanch of the village dehu handa an old man knew the variety of kasbai dehu handa drifted into the past his eyes turned dreamy and with a tremble in his voice he told us how the entire village at one time grew only kasbai he said there was a time when people passing our village during lunch time would be forced to stop and ask for a meal such was the alluring aroma of kasbai the entire area would have this heady aroma hanging in the air as all the houses cooked the same rice today he said no one grew kasbai and everyone had shifted to growing the new hybrid varieties he claimed he had to force himself to eat this rice that was so insipid while talking about kasbai rice dehu handa's eyes became dreamy he told the author that in those days the entire village at one time grew only kasbai people passing their village would be forced to stop and ask for a meal because of the aroma of kasbai aroma means fragrance or scent good scent but now all had shifted to the new hybrid varieties dehu handa told the author that the hybrid varieties of rice are insipid insipid means tasteless with the advent of irrigation farmers were tempted to grow a second crop and kasbai being a long duration rice was replaced by the short duration hybrids so that the harvest could be done earlier this ensured that the farmers could take up a second crop kasbai was a long duration rice kasbai was replaced by the short duration hybrid varieties of rice farmers wanted to grow the second crop so the kasbai rice had disappeared i asked why he had shifted if he was so unhappy with the hybrids no one forced him to did they he smiled and replied that their fields did not have fences and once the harvest was over the cattle were released into the fields if my field alone has kasbai it will be a treat for the cattle he explained dew handa was forced to stop the production of kasbai rice because all the villagers were growing the hybrid varieties of rice their fields did not have fences so one farmer can't grow the long duration rice like kasbai sometimes we have to fall in line with the community he lamented lamented means he expressed the sorrow hybrids need more water fertilizers and pesticides he said that yields were good initially but of late he had reduced a lot besides he said that each year they had to increase the quantity of urea and pesticides they used it was as if the new year hybrids had an insatiable appetite for chemicals dew handa lamented means he expressed the sorrow on the loss of kasbai it was true that hybrids need more water fertilizers and pesticides every year they need more chemicals but yield a little 
he told us that even when there were flash floods in the 60s kasbai had stood its ground he fondly remembered how the rice was still standing when they all returned to their village after the floods had receded such was the strength of the rice but look what we have done he ruined devanda told an incident of flash flood flash flood sorry flash floods in the 60s the villagers were migrated because of flash flood when they returned after the floods had receded the kasbai rice was still standing in their fields he ruined ruined means he regretted he expressed sorrow as he went on reminiscing about the rice we gently guided him back to the reason for our visit the kasbai seeds he was sure that there was not a single villager in this area who would have the seeds of kasbai according to him the only people who still grew it were the adivasis in a hamlet at the foothills of the mountains in the next village asravari the writer asked devanda the ex sarpanch about kasbai seed he suggested the author to visit the adivasis in a hamlet at the foothills in the next village asravari look here hamlet hamlet means a group of houses we bid farewell to devanda who lovingly blessed us and said mahalakshmi the local goddess will give you the seeds of kasbai they said goodbye to devanda who blessed them to get the seeds of kasbai in asravari village we asked the sarpanch to help us as we were not very fluent with the local dialect he sent his assistant jivan with us into the hills after a half hour walk through thick vegetation crossing numerous streams and ditches and scrambling over rocks and gravel we searched the sleepy hamlet of boripada there were just two ramshackle houses in front of us and we wondered if this was the right place the writer visited asravari village in search of kasbai rice seed she was not fluent with the local dialect local dialect means local language so he took the help of a man from the village named jivan they walked through thick vegetation streams ditches and rocks and at last they reached the sleepy hamlet of boripada hamlet means a group of houses hamlet means a group of houses you know this so two ramshackle houses and wondered that the place might be the right place to ask for the traditional rice kasbai ramshackle means a house in broken down condition a wrinkled old woman sitting before one of the houses looked at us with curiosity as we approached her we signal to jivan to ask the crucial question she muttered in reply and we looked at jivan for quick interpretation she broke into a smile and informed us that she did have the rice and wanted to know who we were and why we wanted it there was an old woman who had wrinkle on her face she looked at them with curiosity jivan asked her about the seed of kasbai rice she muttered something muttered something means she uttered something but the writer couldn't understand her language jivan explained it 
to the writer that the woman had the rice and she wanted to know about the writer and the others it was a difficult task to keep a straight face and i had to control a strong desire to hug her after searching for months we had found the elusive kasbai we explained to her that we were from pet nearby and we needed the seeds to grow we asked for 10 kilograms of rice she muttered and scolded jivan interpreted that she had never heard of pet village and also did not have a weighing scale she was willing to give the seeds only in baskets we asked for a single basket of rice and jivan told us to pay her something i handed over a 100 rupee note and for the first time in the last 10 minutes her face broke into a smile she nodded her head in approval the writer became very happy he had a strong desire to hug the old lady because of the happiness his search was completed at last he found the elusive kasbai they explained to her that they were from pet village and they wanted the rice seeds to grow it they asked for 10 kilograms of rice the lady told in her language that she had never heard of pet village and she did not have a weighing scale she gave the rice in a basket and the writer gave her a 100 rupee note the woman smiled and accepted the note as we walked back against the fading sunset leaving behind a smiling old lady i couldn't help but wonder that here nestling in the foothills of an unknown mountain away from the hustle and bustle of the road or the city where the real people of india these were the people who still held on to the rich biodiversity of our land and no one even cared about them they had never heard of hybrids fertilizers or pesticides they just grew their rice and ate what they got the old lady we met had probably never left boripara her world was unspoiled by progress and for once i was grateful for that while returning back the writer thought that the people nestling in the foothills who are away from the hustle and bustle of the road or the city are the real people of india they had never heard of hybrids fertilizers or pesticides in their lives the old lady did not know the world and our progress her world was not corrupted by progress the author expresses his gratitude to the lady summary of the lesson the writer venkat ayer is a techy turn farmer he gave up the it industry and practiced organic farming he delivers lectures on organic farming he also works with organic farmers and ngos working in the organic field in this lesson the writer narrates his experiences of organic farming in 2004 he took the first crop of moog that is green gram the broker of the land moro dada advised him to use pesticides but the writer did not use any pesticides for the crop he had good production of moog without use of any chemicals the first experience of the moog crop was a moral booster to the writer the writer wanted to grow a good traditional variety of rice he heard the name of kasbai rice as a desi scented variety of rice but the variety was disappeared the writer talked to some agricultural officers he spoke to an ex sarpanch of dhaniwari village his name was dehu handa 
he praised the rice variety kasbai and lamented that the variety was no more dehu handa suggested the writer to visit the adivasis in a hamlet at the foothills of the mountains in the next village asravari to get the seed of kasbai the writer went to asravari village he took the help of an assistant named jivan to find out the adivasi hamlet named boripada there were just two ramshackal houses the wrinkled old woman gave them a basket of kasbai rice the writer became very happy after getting the seed of the rice while returning back from the adivasi hamlet boripada the writer thought that these adivasis were the real people of india who protected the biodiversity of our land they had never heard of hybrids fertilizers or pesticides according to the writer their world was not spoiled by progress he expresses the feeling of gratitude to the old lady who gave him the seed of kasbai dear students once again read the lesson carefully and prepare your own notes for more videos subscribe my youtube channel thank you for watching have a nice day